it's a, a topic which I've been interested in for many years, um, as it happens. When I first started working with um, acetylcholine receptors, I realized, and others, of course, did too, that the fetal form and the adult form were not quite the same. Um, and it's become increasingly important over the years, um, particularly with respect to myasthenia gravis. And of course, in myasthenia, you have antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor. Most of them bind to the alpha subunits, which are shared between the adult and fetal forms. Um, but some of them bind specifically to the fetal form. And these antibodies are particularly important because they can interfere with development of the fetus, as you might expect, because the fetus has the fetal form and the patient herself has the, um, the mother of the fetus, has the adult form at her neuromuscular junctions. But she's also making antibodies that are very good at binding to the fetal form, and those can cross the placenta and interfere with movements in the baby. And if during development you block movement in the baby, then the baby can develop joint contractors, so fixed joints, and they can be very severe physically, but they also don't practice swallowing, breathing in utero. And as a result, their swallowing and breathing can be impaired. And some of these babies die either in utero or shortly after birth. So in the 1990s, we discovered that there were these particularly aggressive antibodies that only bind to the fetal form of the acetylcholine receptor and completely block its function as if the patient had been, the, the baby had been given curare or some other neuromuscular blocking agent. And that was very tragic because those antibodies were present in the mother as part of her myasthenia. And therefore, every consecutive pregnancy would be affected because they were always crossing the placenta. However, if you treated the mother for her myasthenia, then it obviously um, helped. And in many cases, or several cases that we know of, the, the mother subsequently had babies that were essentially normal. And as far as I know, have lived a perfectly normal life. There is, however, two aspects of this story. One of them is that some of the mothers don't actually have myasthenia gravis, but they do have these fetal-specific antibodies. So the fetal-specific antibodies don't interfere with the mother's neuromuscular junctions, but they do interfere with the babies. So it's really important to look for those fetal-specific antibodies in a mother who has consecutive babies with this syndrome, because it's quite possible that she will turn out to have those particular antibodies. So that's one reason for being very interested in this. The other reason is that it's actually recently become aware, um, become clear that mothers who've had that syndrome, sometimes babies that were not severely affected at birth have survived, but they have permanent or at least very long lived features which are not myasthenic. They have myopathies. They have problems in several aspects of development. I won't go into the details for time. But that's a whole new series of individuals who the pediatricians now have to recognize that it's the mother's maternal antibodies that are actually leading to this what appears to be a myopathic syndrome. So with that in mind, we set up this treatment model where we were able to show that if we could prevent the transfer of antibodies across the placenta in mice, then the mice babies would be protected from the damaging effects of the antibody. And that's more or less where we've got to know. Hopefully that drug will, will actually be able to be used in humans with a bit more time. I'm hoping that the company, which is UCB, um, to whom I um, declare an interest because they did help fund this study, that they will want to go further. And they have animal model 
work and they can pursue this. Um, I hope the drug which, which we're using is one which actually also reduces the antibody levels in the mother because this is the anti-FCRN monoclonal antibody, which several companies are now producing and which have been shown to reduce antibody levels in patients with myasthenia. And all we're saying is that if you have a mother with myasthenia who is pregnant, there is a very good reason for using this drug because it will also help protect the baby.